Many more countries are opening up their domestic air travel sector as lockdown restriction eases. Airlines and airports are embracing the new norm of social distancing and hygienic practices, while a country like the United Kingdom is introducing a 14-day quarantine for incoming travelers. On the program, we take a look at how airports and airlines are conducting flights in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Plus, the Nigerian Immigration Service at the Muritala Mohamed International Airport Command aligns its operation ahead of the post-COVID era. Thank you so much for joining us on Aviation This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Ju Ukitumbi. As more countries ease their way out of the COVID-19 lockdown, it's no doubt that a new era in air travel is here. From armies of robotic cleaners patrolling airport halls and also disinfecting check-in counters and aircraft, passengers may also have to waft through security and baggage checkpoints without touching anything. In Turkey, national carrier Turkish Airlines has resumed domestic flights between the country's big cities with additional hygiene measures as part of the new normal service. Kits being handed to passengers include face masks, disinfectant and antibacterial wipes. The airline's company has also appointed a hygiene expert crew member for each flight who monitors the process and makes sure the new practices are carried out. From Turkey to Japan, where passengers at Tokyo's Haneda domestic terminal are having to get used to the new norm as they are greeted by airline staff wearing face shields behind plastic sheets at the check-in counters. Two of Japan's major carriers, All Nippon Airways and Japan Airlines, have resumed some domestic flights this month and have implemented strict social distancing and hygiene measures to avoid the further spread of the new coronavirus. Aside the usual body temperature taking and ubiquitous presence of hand sanitizer dispensers, the carriers are urging all passengers to wear a mask and maintain social distancing when lining up for check-in and boarding. We are concerned about what will happen with the virus situation in the future, but our priority now is to offer services where our customers will feel safe when the board are playing. Japan Airlines is not just concentrating on passengers, but is also strengthening cleaning and disinfecting measures for its planes, disinfecting and cleaning flights every single night. The airline's planes can also ventilate air every two to three minutes to maintain fresh air during flights. Now to Italy. Every inch of this viewing passenger plane is being disinfected in Rome's Fiumicino airport, as everything from the seats to the luggage compartments are sanitized. The Airbus 321's captain is encouraging travelers who may be afraid of flying post-lockdown that aeroplanes are safe. Flying is very safe because we have reached a level of elimination of bacteria and viruses, including COVID-19, of 99%. It is very safe. As a person, I would never go on a plane if it was not safe. The air I breathe as the pilot is the same as that of the passengers. I would not fly if it was not completely safe for my sake and that of my crew and passengers. As well as very frequent daily thorough cleaning, Violin is requiring all passengers and staff to wear face masks and observe hygiene rules for all on board. The United States is the next stop as the country plans to issue a revised order that is likely to allow some Chinese passenger airline flights to resume flights. The revised order however limits Chinese carriers to two weekly flights to the United States. This cuts in half the four weekly round-trip flights which Chinese passengers carrier have been flying to the United States. 
For Gulf carriers, Emirates and Etihad Airways, the airlines are extending the period of reduced pay for their staff until September as they try to preserve cash during the global coronavirus pandemic. State airlines, Emirates and Etihad have operated limited, mostly outbound services from the United Arab Emirates since grounding passenger flights in March. They are due to restart some connecting flights this month after the UAE last week lifted a suspension on services where passengers stop off in the country to change planes or for refueling. Like other airlines, Emirates and Etihad have laid off staff due to the impact on its business. Fellow Gulf carrier Qatar Airways has said it could lay off up to 20% of its employees. From the United States to the UK, where a 14-day quarantine is now in place for all travellers arriving in that country in a measure to contain the spread of coronavirus. Passengers from Eindhoven arrive in Stansted Airport near London. One of the travellers said that the social distancing measure were not in place in a bus from the plane to the airport and he has no issues with self-isolation. Not at all, but I think the, the problem here is it's from here to home, I'm going to use a public transport. So if I'm a carrier now, then how would they control it? How would you know if I've spread it to anyone else? So there's no track of that at all. And then uh, it's just filling up a form, but the, the bus was full of us. So all the plane was in the bus, even though before we get to the flight, they say keep your social distance, keep your mask on and all that stuff. But the bus was, was literally 30 uh, centimeters between all of us. Another passenger said he wasn't aware of an online form to be filled prior to the arrival in the UK. I will be under quarantine for 14 days and uh, SNO from other countries. Police officers are checking you on your address, are you there or not? And uh, yeah. All arriving passengers in the United Kingdom will have to fill an online contact form providing details and travel information so that they can be contacted if they or someone they may have been in contact with develops the disease. This will also include giving details of their self isolation accommodation, and if it does not meet the necessary requirements, they will be required to self isolate in facilities arranged by the government at the passenger's expense. Failure to complete the contact form is punishable by a £100 fine. The government said public health authorities will conduct random check-ins in England to ensure compliance and removal from the country will be considered as a last resort for foreign nationals who refuse to follow the rules. The quarantine order is not going down well with airline operators. Meanwhile, airlines in Nigeria and other African countries have hit the rock bottom in the month of April, with passenger traffic dropping by a whopping 98.7%. A regional travel estimate recently released by the International Air Transport Association showed that the dip was nearly twice as bad as the 49.8% demand drop in March. While the statistics for air travel is grim, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria says it has begun changing the face of the local and international airport in Lagos to meet travel demands. The international airport in Lagos is bracing up for the post-COVID era as counters receive additional features to protect staff and passengers. That's coming from the manager in charge there. Mrs. Victoria Shinaba. She was speaking at a recent workshop in Lagos. We are trying to gear up to post COVID when the airport reopens. How do we start operating? 
who does what? How are we going to go about this? We have some things in place too that we are doing, just getting ready for operations. If you, on your way coming, you see that our counters, we've uh, provided uh, shields, we've done some markings, we've done some social distancing uh, marking, and a lot and a lot of operating procedures are ongoing. How are we going to do it? How are we going to attend to our passengers? When people are coming in, what are we expecting from them? The process is not only starting from the screening at the gate now, or even at the counter. It's gone beyond that. Before you get to the terminal building, what happens? How do you assess the terminal? How many people come in? How many people are traveling? How many people come in with them? What do you do? You wash your hand. You sanitize. Water checks your temperature. Your baggages are uh, fumigated before you even come into the terminal building. So this one tells us that there's going to be more time spent in the airport just because we want to travel. But those of us working there, those of us that are going to work with these passengers, what is expected of us? What are we expected to do? We're expected to understand what each and every one of us is doing. Because it's not going to be the way it used to be. It's going to be a new norm. Uh, I'm not a health expert, but from the look of things, we have to learn to live with this COVID. I want to implore us, security is everybody's business. From the cleaner to all the agencies, security agencies, even our food vendors, airliners, we all have to just be security conscious. In this is where we're going to have real security and synergy. When it comes to issues, the enemy is not out there. From my experience in this airport, the enemies are within. So post-COVID, we need to think otherwise and think of survivor first. That is survivor of the um, industry itself. Already because of this pandemic, people are afraid, afraid to travel. So it is our duty and it is our responsibility as frontline officers to ensure that we don't add to their apprehension. We want to ensure that we don't add to their apprehension. They are afraid of COVID. They want to be afraid of immigration. They want to be afraid of police. You know, we just have to ensure that we make our airport friendly. <laughs>
after washing, it should be properly ironed so that if there's anything, you are taking care of it. Um, immigration officers, there are certain peculiarities because of uh, dealing with um, passengers, handling of um, um, passport of um, passengers. Now, it's during this period we should, as much as possible, avoid direct um, contact with um, passport of passengers. Um, Within the international airport, immigration officials are on the front line and the need to be disciplined in the face of duty is also reiterated. Be highly disciplined to complete assigned tasks with utmost diligence and high sense of responsibility. Every personnel should see their status as an immigration officer as a calling and a platform to help people make positive impact in the society. It is significant to note that the key to true and enduring national development is in revitalizing and actualizing the cherished ethics, values, and norms of the proper public administration in the government institution, which includes the NIS. Airport operations certainly will never be the same again. It's imperative that all stakeholders work together to ensure the passengers feel safe when traveling at this time. With commercial airlines facing uncertainty over their future flying schedules due to the coronavirus crisis, pilots from the Tiger Club in the United Kingdom now benefit from spectacular views of the city and the river Thames. Sections of East London's airspace normally open to planes taking off from and landing at London City Airport are now available for the club's use. Yeah, no, Right. Anna Walker and her fellow pilots fly one of the club's two 1933 de Havilland Tiger Moth aircraft from an aerodrome in Upminster in the eastern London suburbs. Normally, the whole of the London airspace around uh, London City Airport and all the other London airports is very congested. But at the moment, there's hardly any traffic around, and so we are allowed to go. Uh, fly over places we don't normally go to because it's too congested. I think our pilots are always looking for a new challenge and a new thrill um, and this opportunity of flying uh, over an airport which is shut down is just another attraction and it's a beautiful part of London as well. Fly along the Thames, uh, the Thames barrier uh, and just looking at the London skyline is just so magic. The airport hopes to resume domestic services at the end of June with the aim of restarting international flights in early July, although several airline operators have cast doubt on the viability of doing so. Visibility is staggering. We've never had visibility like this. I've can't, never seen anything like this. You can see um, Wembley from Surrey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the visibility has been unbelievable. Um, and there's no smog anywhere and I fly all over the, the world, all over the country um, and since um, the lockdown it's noticeable uh, how much you know, clear the air is. The combination of a rare opportunity and perfect condition means the Tiger Club will avail themselves of London open skies for as long as they are allowed. Now to the safety of cabin air as airlines try to convince nervous travelers it's perfectly safe amid efforts to relaunch a grounded travel industry. Many believe that pressurized cabins only contain static or recycled air. In an office building, air is said to be exchanged about four times every hour. On a modern jet, it's up to 20 or 30 times. In most cases, compressed air is fed from the clean part of an edge to air conditioning parks. From there, it flows to fans in the cabin ceiling where it's dispersed downwards. 
Half of that is then recycled through filters designed to remove 99.9% of contaminants. Lane makers insist cabin air is renewed every two to three minutes. Scientists caution that in reality, air is always a blend as air currents over short distances are hard to predict. Boeing and Airbus have deployed engineers to examine seat-to-seat -seat airflows to better understand how to reduce the risk of in-flight transmission. The coronavirus crisis will lead the airline industry into record annual losses of $84 billion as 2020 goes down as the worst year in the history of aviation. This is coming from the International Air Transport Association with the boss of the body describing it as a disaster. We forecast um, a loss of revenues for airlines that is accounting for $419 billion uh, which is 50% of our revenues, and um, cumulated loss for the uh, industry around $84 billion. In 2021, situation should improve. Um, we should have, uh, we should reach um, a revenue which is uh, uh, above uh, $530 billion. Um, dollars. Um, we hope that you know governments will be um, will take different measures because they will have the methodology, the equipment, the readiness, the plans, and um, if we could avoid complete lockdowns, that would be better for the uh, for, for 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 everybody, for the whole economy, and for the air travel industry as well. Um, but if there is no second wave, uh, but the worst is behind us. Airline passenger traffic is expected to rise 55% in 2021 from a low level this year, while remaining 29% below its 2019 level. This is our cutting call on the show. Thank you so much for watching. Do stay safe. Abukola Ju Uketunbi.